Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. So, um, uh, stations. Stations are interesting. I don't actually have uh, too much experience with stations, but they are uh, one of the coolest aspects of Kerbal, in my opinion. Uh, I just, uh, you know, you do, you do one station, you've probably done them all, so I don't tend to make a lot of stations. But I decided to do one. Um, mostly because I thought I was going to get the science, but uh, as it turns out in this, I pretty much got all the science I could get that the station would have earned me, so I may do another station in the future, just not around the moon, which is what this station is being going to be built around. Um, so I figured I'd go through a bit more of the process of actually building the rocket. I mean, it's, it's what I spend the most time on, um, probably. Um, and it's the part I have the most fun with. Um, as I unlock more and more pieces of technology in the, uh, you know, the science tech tree, I will get more efficient modules, but I, you know, one of the reasons I like career mode is because you are limited, um, to some of the less efficient modules in the beginning, and you have to kind of just make them work for you. Um, you do you end up with kind of weirdo designs like this, where, you know, it's maybe instead of having uh, boosters or solid boosters you just go with liquid I tend to like to make liquid boosters rather than having solid boosters but I think this is one of those things that are going to be contested but you know once we have our oof, once we have our rocket design that that was a really close shave for those um, booster decouples um, you know we it, it's it's all by the numbers once you've once you've flown one rocket into orbit you've flown a dozen or so but it's nice to you know keep keep in practice and every rocket flies a little bit differently so um this is the first part of our station the mission actually calls for two separate modules to be connected together and what i tend to do is just design one of course and uh you know build it to be symmetrical so that it can couple to itself rather than building two separate um, station designs I'm sure building a separate station design would be fun, and I might do that in the future, but for now, uh, symmetrical designs, probably less interesting to look at. We're gonna, we're gonna ignore how that station looks like, by the way, and also what it looks like to dock two of these together. I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna hear it. Um, but uh, yeah, here's our second module up. Things are, things go about as well as could possibly go with this mission uh, and like I said I don't actually have that much experience with docking stations but um, I, I, I pretty much had this one perfect you know basic you know just match orbits uh, original you know, at first match orbits with your second station and I, if you've never um, built a station in Kerbal basically what I try and do or what I like to do is just shrink our second um, you know stations orbit a little bit so that it can catch up it'll be traveling faster then you match um try and match speeds with the other um station but of course you have to you have to get it as close to uh intersect as possible so you gotta you gotta make a maneuver that'll get it as close as possible and then when it's at a comfortable um distance that you think that docking would be possible then you match speeds with it there are uh, fortunately a couple things that the um, nav ball helps you with in this regard. Um, it gives you, if you you know set the, your station as a target, it'll give you a couple of extra indicators that tell you um, both the speed of the, um, I believe the speed of the uh, of the second module or second station part, as well as the direction. But um, I think it might just be speed and also retro speed, whatever you want to call it. So you can you can easily kind of match your uh, speeds with the second module. And then it's just a matter of like um, playing chicken with, with your second station where you, you fly towards it, um, at, you know, hopefully quickly so that you don't, you're not waiting eons, but not too quickly because you are, in fact, flying a piece of highly expensive... Um, space junk towards another highly expensive piece of space junk and then you get to witness the miracle of docking which is um definitely uh one of the most satisfying aspects is you after all of your hard work of uh building this station they they actually kind of line up and uh, have this kind of satisfying magnetism 
happen. And uh, I had to look up why it wasn't actually docking for some reason. It wasn't, you know, I was having complications and then I realized you have to turn off the sat, uh, the, the SAS, the um, basically gyro, um, so it could it can properly dock. And uh, then it then it was a station. It wasn't just a station also, it was a station with a little bit of Delta V left. So I decided to try a little risky maneuver and uh, um, fly it um, retrograde so that we could get a tighter orbit around the moon. In retrospect, I think this was a mistake because if I ever want to connect something else to the station, it means I'm going to have to match a tighter orbit to, uh, to, to dock with it. And I think a wider orbit would make it a lot easier to, um, you know, rendezvous with it but either way I, I did it I did it mostly for the science and then came to realize that I wasn't going to get any science because I had already collected all of this data unfortunately but whatever lesson learned and station now complete um, if you uh, enjoyed this definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this and I'll see you guys next time for the Minmus mission take it easy <laughs>